Up next, day nine of 30 GAM tutorials, and I have another fabulous image styling tutorial for you today, and I'm going to share with you two techniques for adding a matte finish to your photos, and you'll discover the one that provides the best results. So if you're ready, let's do it. So I have two different images here that I'm going to use to demonstrate how to create the matte-like effect. So I'm going to start with this image here. And once we go through both techniques that I'm going to share with you and both images, you will see how one is better than the other. So I'm going to come up here to colors and select levels. And the method for creating the matte effect is to remove detail in the shadows, make them darker, and then brighten up that part of the tonal range. So I'm going to start by adjusting the black point here to the right. And as I do, I begin to clip data and parts of the image become darker. Now that I've removed that detail, I want to brighten up that part of the tonal range and I can do that with my output levels right here. And as I drag it to the right, you can see those shadows are getting much brighter. And in essence, that is supposed to be the matte effect. And I've seen this technique on other YouTube videos and I'm not a big fan of this. And let me show you why, because it's not going to work on all images. It tends to work on images with darker backgrounds or parts of the image that are darker in general. So if we take a look at this image, it's much brighter. And if we apply that technique with levels, I'm going to adjust the black point here to the right and then brighten up that part of the image. And that's supposed to give us the matte effect, but it doesn't really look like a matte effect. To me, it's more of a, an adjustment to the brightness of the shadows versus creating a matte effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that and let me show you my preferred method for creating this effect. And I'm going to use the curves tool, which is one of my favorite tools for achieving my creative vision because it gives you a lot of different options to creatively make edits to your images, even color correcting your images. So the curves tool here has a histogram in the back and that represents the histogram of your image. So we have our shadows over here on the left, midtones in the middle, highlights on the right. And we also have our white and black points here as well, which is represented by this top right circle right here is the white point and then the black point is down here in the left. So we adjust the tonal range of our image based on this linear line by bending it. So if I click here and drag up, I make the image brighter, down makes it darker, and it's affecting the entire image. So if I wanna target a specific tonal range, the shadows in this case, then I need to add additional anchor points to keep that bending of the line from occurring in other parts of the tonal range. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another anchor point right here so I can concentrate more on the shadows right here. So now when I click and drag up, I begin to bring up the shadows and not the midtones and the highlights. So this is starting to give us the matte effect, but the key to this is adjusting the black point. So if we begin to clip detail by dragging it to the right, it's actually making it darker and it's not really giving us that matte effect. So instead what we wanna do is we don't want pure black, we want more of a gray color. So what we can do to get that is drag this up and it converts it from a black point to a gray point. And the higher you go, the brighter the gray or the lighter the gray color. And that is in essence a true matte effect. How cool is that? I love it. So to me, that looks 10 times better than levels. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let me show you something else here real quick. If you find a tone curve adjustment that you love and you want to save it for future images, come over here and click on this plus icon and give it a name. I'm going to call this matte effect 02 and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to save that to that image. And let's see how this effect applies to a lighter image like this one. I'm going to go back up to colors and select curves. And now I don't need to adjust my linear line. I can just come up here to presets and select my preset from here. And boom, I have an automatic instant matte effect. How cool is that? I love it. So if you want, of course, you can always come in and you can make adjustments 
to your preset here to adjust it for the particular image that you're working on. And again, I think that looks more like a matte effect versus what we got from the levels tool. And of course I can come up here and now save this as a preset as well. So make sure to check out that playlist there to your left to learn more GIMP editing tips and tricks on how to retouch, edit, and style your images. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.